Dear students, welcome to the third lecture in study skills, which is entitled Works Cited List and In-Text Citation in MLA. Well, it is divided into two parts. The first part, it's a kind of reinforcement about work uh, citation. And the second part, it is dedicated to in-text citation. And this is part one. Part 1. Work Citation or Work Cited List Work Citation is the process of creating a work cited list or call it uh, references at the end of your research paper, dissertation or even your PhD thesis. This process relies on the nine features of citation that we have discussed before and for the sake of revision I will repeat them in a nutshell. Author and title of the source are very important uh, uh, features and we call them lead information. The other seven features are uh, or they belong to container one or what we call the academic container uh, which are uh, title of container, other contributors, version, uh, number, publisher, publication date, and even location. How do you create a work cited list? Well, the process involves two steps. Uh, the first step is uh, you have to create uh, what we call a chart of identification of the nine uh, features of citation. And they have to add something else. Uh, so during this uh, process or um, in this uh, step you have to start writing uh, down the aspects uh, of your source that you have encountered and here you have to start with the lead information uh, 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 which is made of uh, the author and uh, the title after that you have to select what we call the academic container aspects which are made of seven uh, and I have mentioned them before, starting from the title of the container until location, as you see here in the example. Uh, and I have to add something else, and it is very important. So since we are living in a virtual world and with the rise of the digital communication uh, via the means of internet and the web, so it is very important to add, or the eighth, uh, MLA 8th edition uh, has added another feature uh, here, which is uh, known as container 2 or what we call the digital or the technical container and here it is about to provide uh, aspects if they exist uh, about uh, the second container or the, the location of your source uh, on the web and this is very important and I will give examples As we see here uh, in front of us uh, a book or uh, an anthology which is uh, a book that is made of uh, book chapters with different authors and uh, one or two editors and this book is entitled uh, uh, The Cambridge Companion to Jane Austen and which uh, is edited by Edward uh, Copeland and Juliet M.C. Master and the source that uh, we have uh, uh, taken some information from is uh, chapter 9 which is entitled uh, Money by Edward uh, Copeland and here after I have uh, scanned and identified uh, uh, the features uh, of citation that this source contains I have uh, to write them down here as you see uh, in the chart of identification, author, title of source, uh, title of container, other contributors, and here we have the editors, uh, publisher, uh, publication date, and location. And since we have no information or we have no technical information regarding uh, the web page or the data database or uh, the source uh, that contains this book, so uh, I have left it uh, empty as we see here. 
So this is step one, is to check your source, to identify uh, the features that this source contains. After that, you have to write them down on the chart of identification. Step two is very simple and easy. After uh, you have done uh, the most difficult work of identification, all what you need to do is you are going to transform your chart into a horizontal work cited entry, as we see in the example here. So uh, you start with author, family name, uh, comma, after that uh, the first name, after that dot, then you put, um, since it's a book chapter, you have to put it between uh, a quotation mark. Uh, don't forget to put the dot before the quotation mark. After that, you have uh, to write down uh, the container, the first container, which is uh, here uh, a book or an anthology. Uh, after that, you have to put it uh, in italics uh, and uh, put the corresponding punctuation, which is uh, here a comma. After that, you put uh, the names of uh, editors edited by, and you start with uh, the first editor, then the second editor. After that, uh, publisher, uh, publication date, and the location. Don't forget to put the corresponding comma that uh, goes with uh, your uh, uh, feature. And that's it. Very simple. You start with step one. After that, step two. And you have to be careful. Be careful with the, the, the punctuation because it's very important. So let's practice with uh, different forms of uh, work citation by having different examples uh, with uh, different sources. Uh, and here I'm going to mention a uh, printed book, uh, an anthology which is made of different book chapters, an article which is uh, located in uh, a journal which is located in another digital source or container which is a database and I'm going to define it later. So the first uh, reference or source is a printed book which is entitled The Insects uh, and uh, the author of this book is Ross E. Hutchins. So we have to start with uh, the first step of identification uh, of the, the features of citation and here we are. We start with the lead information, author, title of source. After that, we move to container one, and all what we have, since it is a printed book, usually we have only the publisher and the publication date, and uh, it's not a book chapter or a journal, so we don't have a, a location here. Uh, for, the, for container two, since it's uh, a printed book, uh, we don't have uh, any feature in uh, container two. And uh, after we have done with the identification, we have to transform this uh, information into a, a work cited uh, entry. And here we go, as we see here. Uh, the family name, Hutchins, comma, Ross, uh, E. After that, you have to put uh, the corresponding punctuation dot. After that, you have to put uh, the title of uh, the source, which is a book, and it should be italicized. And then you put dot. After that, you have to put the publisher, comma, publication date, and uh, full stop. It's very simple, as you see. The second example, it's about a work that is collected from uh, an anthology. And as I have said, an anthology is a published collection of poems or other pieces of writing, including book chapters, uh, which uh, have been collected uh, in one book by an editor or two editors, or it could be even uh, three editors or more. So as we see here in our example, uh, we have uh, paraphrased, let's, let's assume that we have paraphrased or quoted an, uh, an idea from uh, a chapter that is entitled Serving in Florida, which is located in this book or in this anthology. Everyone is an author. Uh, so here you have to start with the lead information, which is author, title of source, 
and since it is a book chapter you have to put it between a quotation mark and if it has been published before you have to put uh, the original uh, publication date uh, uh, near uh, the title of source after that you have uh, to put the information or uh, the features of container one and here it's all about uh, the academic container here which is an anthology you start the container everyone is an author this is the title of the container the contributors and here since it is an uh, since it's an anthology we have editors you have to put the editors and if we have more than uh, two editors you have to put uh, the first editor second editor then you put e all which means more than two here uh, version we don't have an edition number uh, it's not an article so there is no number then we have public uh, the public the publisher here Norton uh, and company WW then publication date after that you have to put here the location because it's not about quoting from one book but here from an article or from a book chapter that is located in an anthology so we have to put the pages uh, the the uh, the, the starting page and uh, the last page uh, and you have to put uh, a dash between them as we see here in the example after that you have uh, to transform uh, the information on uh, the chart of identification into a final work cited entry by keeping the same order and uh, don't forget uh, to put the, the corresponding punctuation that goes with each feature this is very important and that's why i keep uh, insisting on this uh, issue the third example is about uh, quoting or paraphrasing an information or an idea that is taken from uh, a journal article that is located in uh, a database and here uh, our example is about a very famous uh, database which is JSTOR it stands for journal storage and is an electronic archive of leading journals across many academic disciplines and it was founded in 1995 as we see in our example uh, so the journal that uh, let's assume that we have uh, uh, taken an information from is entitled collaboration and Co commodification in assisted procreation and uh, it is located in uh, a journal that is entitled uh, law and society review and uh, vol it stands for volume which is uh, here the volume is uh, uh, 36 and the number is uh, 2 and it is a special issue here and uh, as I have said it is located in uh, JSTOR uh, in this um, and you have even uh, the location or the digital location which is uh, the link uh, to this source so as we uh, identify all these features we have to write them down uh, on our chart of identification as we see here in the example so you have to pay attention here uh, to the first uh, lead information or the first category which is the lead information and then container one which is uh, the academic location and here it's uh, uh, the journal which is uh, entitled law and society review after that uh, you have to observe uh, how we put here some information in uh, the digital or the virtual container and here we have the title of the contain container which is uh, uh, the the name of uh, the database JSTOR and then you put the location here which is the link to this uh, or to this article and that's uh, it I would like to finish uh, this lecture with three activities um, they are meant to make things easier when it comes uh, to the fact of retaining uh, the order or the names first of uh, the nine features of citation and uh, the order moving from the lead information uh, until uh, con container two uh, aspects uh, after that uh, it will make easier the, 
to remember uh, the corresponding uh, punctuation that goes with each uh, feature. Let's start with activity one. And the command is to identify the nature of the underlined features in the following work cited. And we have here two works cited. The first one, as we see here, uh, the underlined feature is the handbook to Gothic literature. And uh, we have New York University Press. So you tell us uh, what are these features? Are they author, source, version, number, location, uh, publication date, publisher? You have uh, just to say what is the nature or what is the name of this underlined feature here. And that's all. I'm going uh, to correct this activity uh, after I would uh, finish with uh, the content or the second part of this uh, lecture. The second activity is meant to practice uh, the corresponding punctuation that should go with each uh, feature of citation. And here the command is to omit the slashes then you put the right corresponding punctuation, whether comma or a dot, in order to make these work cited valid. Good luck, and we are going to see uh, the correction uh, after the second part of the lecture. Activity 3 um, is about uh, checking whether these uh, statements are true or false. In case they are true, you have to put true. If they are false uh, statements, uh, all what you need to do is you have to say uh, that uh, they are false and you have to correct them. The first uh, statement uh, is a work cited. Uh, as you see here with the uh, author, source, uh, container, publisher, uh, publication uh, date, and even uh, a location. And the statement said that this source is a book chapter that is located in an anthology. Is it true or false? The second one uh, is it's another work cited. And the, so, uh, the statement goes, this source is a book that is located in a database. You have to say first if this statement is true or false. After that, you have, in case it is false, you have to correct it. Please don't forget to put your answers below in the comments. I will correct these activities after I release the second part of this lecture. So, good luck. Good luck. Please don't forget to put your answers in the comments below.